Hello, I'm John Melville from Vernier Software and Technology. I'm here to talk to you about our little spectrometer, the SpectraVis Plus. And this is one of my favorite devices that we have here at Vernier. It's what we call an array spectrometer. So unlike older spectrometers that only looked at one wavelength at a time, this device can actually look at an entire array of wavelengths, um, all the way from the violet up into the red. And it can do that simultaneously. So you can use this device to actually look at the complete absorption spectra of a compound, be that nickel sulfate or chlorophyll or red food coloring. How this device actually works is there's a little light source right here and the light travels through the cuvette. It goes through a little diffraction grating and after it goes through the diffraction grating, that light, that little rainbow of color is spread across a little detector which is in the back of the device. And that little detector is what can show us all of these wavelengths simultaneously. Now to calibrate it, I'm actually just going to use a sample of water. Now you need to remember that when I'm looking at um, absorbance, absorbance is a unitless measure. So we actually have to, we're actually looking at the amount of light that travels through a, some type of solution relative to our blank. And in this case, my blank is water. So we'll calibrate the device. I can just tap on the meter screen. I just select calibrate. Wait a few seconds for it to be identified. Now, normally, most spectrometers take 10 to 15 minutes to warm up. This spectrometer only needs 90 seconds to warm up, and it's from when the spectrometer is plugged into the device. So I've been talking for over 90 seconds, so I can actually even skip this warm up if I wanted to. And now I'm going to calibrate the device, and most importantly, I'm leaving my blank in here. Then I hit the OK button, and now I'm ready to look at a sample. So here, let's take a look at some nickel sulfate. So this is just some nickel sulfate. I'm going to put it in here, spectrometer. And all I have to do to look at the entire absorption vector of nickel sulfate is click this little collect button. And that's a nice absorption spectra. So you can see right here, we have, we have a really high absorbance in the purple to blue, and then very little absorbance in the blue to green, and then it increases in the red. Now this may be a little bit difficult to see, so I'm gonna show you a little trick to make it so you can actually minimize the rainbow background. I actually really like the rainbow background, but there's a really neat way that you can minimize the rainbow background on the LabQuest, and that's by just double clicking near the top of the graph just like that. So now you can see peak absorbance in the blue violet, very little absorbance here in the blue to green, and then an increase in absorbance here in the red. If I wanted to store this run, I could just hit this little store button right here, and then I could look at, oh, I don't know it, red food coloring. Now, red food coloring, it's probably going to absorb mostly in the green. There we go. So if you look here at this absorbance peak from red food coloring, you can see that it absorbs a little bit in this area in the blue, and then it increases as we get into the green, and then it begins to decrease across the green, but there's very little absorbance here in the red. That means all of these wavelengths are allowed to pass through the solution. That's why the solution is actually red. So let me show you one other activity. And this is the reason why this spectrometer is actually one of my favorite tools to use is because there's an activity that most biologists do called looking at the action spectra of chlorophyll. Now this lab is done at colleges and high schools and instead of taking 45 minutes, you'll see that this takes about, well, two minutes. So I'm gonna go back here to the meter screen. I'm gonna select File, New. I'm gonna discard this data. Now, the chlorophyll extraction that I've done, I've used some spinach and I've extracted <clears throat> the chlorophyll out of it using isopropyl alcohol. So this is my blank, isopropyl alcohol. I'm gonna put that in the spectrometer. I'm gonna recalibrate again. Now remember, the device is already warm, so once the screen comes up, I can skip the warm-up. 
I'm going to finish the calibration. Select OK. And now I'm going to take my chlorophyll extraction, place it in the spectrometer, hit the collect button, and voila, there we have it. So actually, let's take a look at it. I'm going to double click on the screen again. And you can see right here, this is really nice. This is exactly what most teachers want to see, is that chlorophyll absorbs a lot in the blue and a little teeny bit in the red. Like I said, this is one of the reasons why I really love this device, is that this lab now can be done in about two minutes. And then you can go on to do some very interesting inquiry-based activities. Now, the other really interesting thing about this device is that it also is a fluorometer. What a fluorometer is, is there are some compounds, like chlorophyll, that can absorb different wavelengths of light, and then they will re-emit them. They'll like actually glow. And this is actually um, a really important concept in the biomedical field, and it, it's one of the reasons why plants are able to absorb energy from the sun and actually, and actually use it. So I can show you how to demonstrate fluorescence very easily. I'm going to go back here to the meter screen. What I need to do is I need to change how this instrument actually works. So I'm going to tap on the meter screen and I'm going to change the units to uh, fluorescence. There are two LEDs that can be used for fluorescence in the spectrometer. One is a purple LED, which is at 405 nanometers. And another one, which is, oh, it's like an aqua green LED, which is at 500 nanometers. Now, the 405 nanometer LED is designed for really chlorophyll and for GFP, which is referred to as green fluorescent protein. So I'm going to select 405. I'm going to discard all of this data. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, if you could actually look inside this little cuvette, you would see that it's kind of glowing a reddish color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit collect. And there we go. So here we can see the uh, fluorescent spectra of chlorophyll. And this actually includes chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. And you can see that they emit this peak right here in the red. Now, what you may have noticed is that I didn't have to calibrate the spectrometer when I was using it in the fluorescence mode. And this is true. If you're using it in the fluorescence mode, you don't have to calibrate it. And that's actually really nice because if you see the peak height here, it's at about 0.6. Um, to really look at a good shape or a good fluorescent peak, it'd be nice if this peak was a little bit taller, a little bit closer to about 1. 0.8 or 0.9 would be good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to change what we call the sample time to allow the little detector in this device to collect more light to make this peak bigger. You can also use that to make the peak smaller in case the sample that you've put in here has overloaded the detector. Now you would never want to change the sample time if you're using it in absorbance mode. In absorbance mode it needs to be calibrated and you do not want to change the sample time. In fluorescence mode, you can change the sample time to make the peak that you're seeing bigger or smaller. So to change the sample time, I need to go back to the meter screen. And I need to touch right where it says mode. And you can see these data collection parameters. There's some things called sampling time, wavelengths moving, samples to average. I'm just going to change this number right here that says sample time. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to make it 100. And I like to think of this kind of like the shutter speed on a camera when cameras actually had shutters. You're actually allowing it to collect more light and so the peak will get bigger. If I decrease the sample time, then I'm decreasing the amount of time that the detector is looking at the sample and the peak will get smaller. I just am going to tap OK. And then now let's just compare these two peaks. I'm going to store this run. And now I will look at the next peak. There we go. And you'll see the peak height on this one is right at about 0.758 fluorescence. And these are in relative units. They're, they're basically unitless. 
but I can actually look at both by tapping here and looking at all runs. And you can see there are two peaks. I actually increased the size of this peak. So I hope you enjoyed this little introduction to our spectrometer, the Spectrovis Plus, which is one of my favorite devices that we have here at Vernier. If you have more questions about spectroscopy or about other sensors, just visit our website, www.vernier.com.